Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here. Welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Okay, today we got a great topic. We're going to be talking about optimizing customer decisions to increase your sales. Our guest is a business advisor and best-selling author. She is also the go-to e-commerce expert for national US media, USA media. Also, she helps Amazon seven-figure sellers scale up their business and just explode. Anyways, I can't wait to talk to her. Uh, she's been on the podcast before, Ashley Armstrong. So before we get to Ashley, where are you, Kels? Hello. Happy hey, Friday. Happy Friday. Hey, do you know who our sponsor is? Who is it? <laughs> okay. It is Global Wired Advisors. And so, first of all, I want to thank them for being our sponsor. And they are a leading digital investment bank focused on optimizing the business scale process. And if you want more information, make sure you get contact with Chris over at uh, globalwiredadvisors.com. There we go. How are you? Okay. I'm doing fantastic. Excited for the weekends. Um, here in Ontario, they uh, started to finally love some of the lockdown stuff here. So we can finally go outside and do some patios and stuff like that. So yeah, we're excited. Um, let's see. So to get started, if you're watching right now, please smash those like buttons. Um, we also we have our YouTube channel uh, where we have all of the full episodes and daily highlights. Uh, you can search Norman Ferrar on YouTube to find all of the info there. Am I wearing Norm's glasses? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Norm is a little pixely right now, um, but hopefully the Wi-Fi will uh, even out a little bit. But anyways, I think that's about it. Um, if you're interested in our paid membership program, uh, we have a Patreon account. So that is P A P A T R E O N. Um, you can search Lunch with Norm there, and we have a bunch of different tiers, a bunch of a bunch of. Uh, highlight or we have uh, discounts, guest lessons, AMAs, free services, all the good stuff there. Um, and I think that's about it. So I don't know why I'm pixel. I look okay on this side of uh, the camera, but uh, I guess you guys are seeing me a little pixelated. So sorry about that. Uh, I'm not sure how to fix it. Kelsey, that's why you have to come and see your mom and dad on the that's weekend. Right. Hey, it's they Father's Day coming up. It's Father's Day, yeah. So, uh, look, if you have any questions, throw them over into the, uh, the the comments section. But sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and just enjoy the episode. Hey! How are you doing? I am <laughs> doing great. How are you? Oh, I'm super awesome. I really can't complain, to be quite honest with you. Life's pretty amazing right now. Where Whereabouts are you? I'm actually in Vancouver. As soon as I heard Ontario, I'm like, that's that's where I'm from. I'm a Peterborough girl, cottage country, born and oh. raised. <laughs> Kelsey used to play hockey in Lindsay. Very oh my close God, to I went to school at LCVI as oh. well. Yep. <laughs> small, yep. small world. <laughs> oh my God, so small world. It's ridiculous. Yep, six degrees of separation is a beautiful thing. <laughs> yes. Ashley. For those of us who might not know who you are, can you just give us a brief background on who you are and what you do? Yeah, well, um, I'm Ashley Armstrong and I'm known as the hidden rules expert and I help establish product companies monetize their Amazon and their e-commerce listings to really increase their sales and their conversion rates with the traffic that they already have. At the end of the day, I like to focus on the science behind buyer behavior in order to really increase those sales and conversion rates. Because I find a lot of people focus on optimizing robots instead of optimizing their customers. So that's what I love to do. And I'm a regular guest expert on the Emmy Award winning TV show, The List, that's aired on every major station across the US as well. So it's a lot of fun to kind of get the word out there and be the raw, raw person for the e-commerce space and letting everyone know that this is an amazing opportunity, an amazing place for you to build, create, and grow a business, especially because of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've seen a lot of people, you know, that have come on to uh, the podcast or uh, watching the podcast. They send me some uh, messaging 
and they always say, you know, is this for real? And yeah, mm. it's for real. But I think what you have to do is make sure when you're watching YouTube or if you're taking a course, you have to be realistic. If people are leaning yeah. up against a Lamborghini and, and you know, <laughs> doing this, uh, yeah. run, you know, this is a business <laughs> and it, it takes it takes time. And your first product might not be a success. You know, you, you yeah. for us anyway. It's a test point. Yeah, you pay your Amazon tax, right? You have to learn. But, yeah. you know, can you do it? Absolutely. I, I still think, I don't know about you, but I still think that e-commerce, drop shipping, wholesaling, the whole Amazon thing, it is the best way to make a living out there for me. It anyway. really is. You know, like there's there's a lot of business models that are awesome. And really, at the end of the day, I think it's more along the lines of your personality. And if you've done your due diligence to understand the inner workings and what's behind the curtain of that particular business model to know if it's going to work for you, because some people just don't want to deal with the crap that you have to deal with. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you know, even if you look at like investment level of time, energy, capital, when it comes to any sort of business model, if you look at something as simple as a hot dog cart, like that's a $10,000 investment just to get that little business going. But you're like, okay, about five grand for the cart, depending on where you live, you have like maybe four or five grand for the permit. Then you have to stand outside in the cold or the heat and on the weekends and at night and how many hot dogs you got to serve in order to like get some money back. And when you start looking at the inner workings of what you have to do to operate that business, it's like, is this for me or is this not for me? So I really love it when people take their time to be like, is this something that I like to to do? Can I dedicate myself to this? Do I have time and energy to do this? Do I also have the capital to do it? And also having that mindset your, for investment. Uh, and if you don't have the mindset for investment, again, whether it's time, energy and or capital, then it's, it's going to be harder for you to kind of get yourself going. But I tell you, with the pandemic, like I, I spent most of my time and my energy on national TV to let everyone know who are at home who lost their jobs or they weren't sure if they had a job to go back to, that you're sitting at home not really doing anything. And this is the best opportunity for you to start looking into these types of business models because you can do it from home. And if something happens, you're still safe. Like I lived through a level five hurricane. We were expatted out. We didn't know if we had a home to go to. We were sleeping on family's floors in a whole other country for three months. And the only reason we survived and were able to make it through was because I had an e-commerce business. You know what I mean? So it can hit the fan, but your e-commerce business can save you sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think you have to go into it with an open mind that if you're having a problem, okay, fine, you have a problem, resolve. I mean, yeah. if if you're gonna be an entrepreneur, you've gotta be resilient and you've yeah. gotta learn. Uh, if, you, if you're thinking that you could take a course and it's an hour long course or a three hour long course and you're gonna just kill it, you've gotta constantly be learning. Like with Kelsey, with anybody on our team, the, the what we'll do is we provide one hour of training each day they have wow. to learn. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't become an expert or if you don't learn the new t uh, techniques, you're not going to get anywhere. And that's the same with e-com. Like, you're playing yeah. with a ton of people who want to take your sales. You know, yeah. so. <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking at, I usually can't read, but I just saw, um, tw uh, who was it? Somebody was just saying, oh, it was Nathan. My first product failed bad. I'm kind of interested. Why did it feel bad? Was it just knowledge? Was it, uh, you know, not doing the proper research? Mm -hmm. uh, so Ashley, you know, when, when I launch a product, I'm all, always talking about listing optimization. You're talking yeah. about customer optimization. Let's talk about that. What's the difference? Yeah, well, really, at the end of the day, they go hand in hand. They're like two sides of the same coin really. Um, and so obviously listing optimization in this concept of we want to be found by the customers who are searching for a type of product. So we're optimizing for the robots, for the algorithms, whether you're on Amazon or your own website or, you know, within Google or it doesn't really matter where you are, but you're just trying to get found by a robot so it can place you. So that's kind of obviously one side of the coin. And uh, that also brings in the lead generation aspect, depending on however you decide to do the lead generation aspect, whether it's paid ads or organic. So side A. And then side B is what do you do or what happens when the customer gets there? And I find that no matter if I'm working with a $10 million company or I'm working with someone who's only doing $1,000 a month, the 
customer part, the optimization of the experience the customer should have to understand the who, what, where, how, why, and when of your particular product so they can make that educated buyer choice and feel great about it, it really gets missed or they do bare minimum. <laughs> I mean, bare, bare minimum. So really at the end of the day, when we're looking at like Amazon as an, ex um, as a, an example, you know, we know that the highest percentage of people who are purchasing on that platform, there's about 24% are buying products every few weeks. Okay, so that's great. And then we break that down into what's the percentage of prime shoppers compared to non prime shoppers and the highest percentage for prime shoppers is actually 20% a few times a week. Right. And non prime shoppers is actually a lot longer than that. So now we're like, Ooh, FBA, 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 we know there's a 20% you know, percentage of people buying a couple times a week when they are a membership of Amazon. And then we also know, okay, so depending on your demographic, who you're selling to or anything along those lines, that the highest percentage of shoppers is actually the demographic or the age between 27 and 32 that are buying on Amazon. So when we're kind of like looking at a few of these things, like who are these people? Where are they coming from? Are they a member? Are they not a member? How often are they buying? How often are they on, you know, like on their lunch break and they're, <laughs> they're looking for something on their cell phone or whatever it might be. Like part of that kind of dives into like the customer buying experience. And of course it just moves on past that because Amazon has a 93% retention rate. So really at the end of the day, yes, we have to have listing optimization for, getting found and lead generation, but it's like, what are we going to do to convert the people once they're there? And that's the area that I love to really dive into with customers, uh, with my clients, excuse me, uh, with their product listings, whether it's on Amazon or not on Amazon, because it's really kind of the same sort of strategy for the most part. But it's, it's really exciting once you kind of break down, you know, the customer experience, you know, the product, the company, the who, what, where, how, why, and when, and you think it's like the most basic, simplistic thing to do and extract for your listings. And actually, it's not. <laughs> it takes a little elbow grease to really find out those details and, and how to execute it appropriately. You know, one of the things uh, I, I talk to my clients about is uh, make sure you order your competitors and order your product. And yeah. I had I was on a podcast and a package came in. My wife brings me this package and it was this beard product. And uh, anyways, I just, I was excited. I opened it up while I was on the podcast. I said, oh, wow, I got some beard stuff. And the first thing that came in was a beard brush and a burlap bag. The burlap bag smelled like it came out of a farm, okay, to begin with. Mm -hmm. The second thing was the brush itself had um, almost like, you know, when you have a mist from spray paint, you know, it's just mm -hmm. like a dust. It was all over yes, the yes, brush, yes. like in the bristles. So you'd almost have to wash the brush. Clean it before you, yeah. you got got it and then i put the beard oil on okay or the beard balm on after the podcast i went upstairs and my wife went like this and said you smell awful and it turned out the beard oil was rancid i couldn't smell it oh. like when i first smelt it it smelled like cedar wood when i when yeah. i ended up putting it on i smelt like rotten salmon and so the, <laughs> the reason i am saying this is that if you don't buy your own product, you'll never know the customer experience. Yeah. And it, if you don't know the customer experience, if you can't start there, you'll never know how to improve the product because you always think that it's coming from your manufacturer 100%. Yeah, absolutely. And oh my gosh, I can just see you walking around. <laughs> I'm smelling like this. And the funniest thing, like, you know, the old factory bulb in our nose, like it will smell something then after like 30 seconds or whatever it is it you no longer can smell it anymore, which is why, you know, people who work in areas or, or whatnot that don't smell the nicest, they don't even notice it after a very short period of time. But yeah, yeah, definitely <laughs> looking at the comp competition and looking at yourself and, and going through that experience as a, a as a customer rather than the owner is so ridiculously important. And, you know, it really that what you're saying, your story really ties into you know, the, the science behind buyer behavior, the science behind the human psychology and what we're going through. And so when we're looking at three different components that are super important, that really ties into your story, which I absolutely love that you brought that up is, you know, like habits that don't take a conscious thought, they're implicit memories. And then we have somatic memories, which are for dates, times and words. 
And then we have episodic memory, which is from personal experience. And the interesting thing is that our brain has three different sections for memory. And the older we get, of course, a lot of those memories end up falling away and only the most recent memories end up sticking with us. I think a lot of us can understand that <laughs> as we're getting older in life and how that works. But really at the end of the day, if the brain is forgetting some point or part of a memory out of those three things that I had just mentioned, say two of them are forgotten and one of them does get remembered, it can actually fire and wire and bring them all back in again. And so when we look at like, okay, so how is the brain working? What's firing? What's wiring? If something's getting missed, something else can get picked up and then can bring back that memory again, which is like this really beautiful cycle of this loop. We have to think about three really important things, especially when it comes to online sales, because people aren't buying products online. They're buying pictures of products online. They're relying on the customer feedback, the testimonials, the social proof that you're providing, the videos, the unboxing, you know, everything you can possibly do to make it as tangible as possible online is we want to really hit and own the emotion that you're making someone experience when they get a hold of your product or they come to your listing and how they feel about understanding what it is that you're presenting to them. And then your point exactly how you feel when you open up that box, the place. So the place can be, again, it could be your website. It could be your product listing. It could be the place where they use the, the item or the product. Uh, it could be a wedding, it could be a baby shower, like something that's impactful for the place. And then the story. And I think everyone understands the importance of story. We hear about it in copywriters. We hear about it for sales pages. We hear about it, you know, for making videos and, you know, doing lives and everything else like that. So this is not new information, but we have to kind of like string it all together. So if you can hit, you know, emotion, place and story, and you take all those three things into consideration about the entire customer journey of finding your listing, their experience on your listing, the ease of buying from you, whether on Amazon or not on Amazon, getting the box, opening up, pulling everything out, how it smells, how it feels like your story was so perfect for this whole analogy. It's so ridiculously important. And then, you know, there's a little bit more, of course, diving in deeper than that. But that's kind of like the grand scheme of things. Again, not rocket science, but we have to take it into consideration. We have to hit all three of those points to really make sure they bring people back to us again. And so they're able to kind of be our organic natural ambassadors because they would be able to tell people how awesome we are. <laughs> you know, I, I was talking with uh, Ben Leonard. Do you know him? I don't think so. Oh, a great guy uh, mm -hmm. out of the UK. And he was saying one of the things that he does to solidify that customer experience is if he knows who the person is, he sends them a video saying, hey, so-and-so. And now if you've got hundreds of thousands of orders, that'd be kind of tough to do. Uh, but even a generic video would probably do just like my generic handwritten notes. But um, yeah. just, hey, so-and-so, thank you so much for you know being part of the group. We do that with the Patreon group, you know, mm -hmm. when, when people sign up. But for a product, somebody buys my soap. Thank you for buying my soap. Here's a video, you know, just thanking the person personally. All of a sudden, yes. you, if they, if that's it's hugely impactful. Absolutely. Yeah, I had one of my clients do that. We, um, well, there's, there's like Bongiorno, there's Warm Welcome. Warm, Bongiorno is more expensive, but it's more like a traditional CRM. And it's awesome because you can set up all these leads and like it just kind of pops out organically and, and, and whatnot. And a less expensive version is like Warm Welcome. That's exactly it. We did a campaign. Uh, obviously, it wasn't on Amazon. It was more for their website, even though they did sell on Amazon as well. And every order that came through, the owner did throw out, you know, thank you so much for blah, 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 blah. It was like two seconds. Uh, and then, of course, we had an... Um, uh, an evergreen one in there that didn't say the person's name for when we got <laughs> too many orders yep. kind of coming in. But the feedback, the people absolutely loved it. It was super, super cool. They, you know, the responses that um, my client was getting from just using the exact same tactic. Yeah. It, it, it's the little things, right? Like yeah. what was Brian? I used to be a, a big fan. I still am a big fan of Brian Tracy and you know, the, mm. the, the psychology of selling it. And he said uh, the, the, the at a horse race you know the first place winner makes the fame and the fortune the second place even if it's by a nose nobody knows them or yep. her you know yep. what are what are what are what's a horse like in a horse race is it a male or a female that are running around i don't i don't know i, I don't know either <laughs> <laughs> anyways the horse okay so let's talk about uh the actual platforms amazon Shopify, Walmart, any of these, 
do you have to, uh, um, I said it, I was going to say attack. Do you have to approach your customers differently? You know, I think every platform might have some of some of its nuances at the end of the day, and they are what they are. You have to follow the rules. You have to deal with whatever system they're providing you and the only like, you know, aspects that you can use, like how many images you can upload or not. And we know that scientifically, the more images that you have, the more customers trust you. Mm -hmm. And the better quality the images have, the more the customers trust you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all great and dandy. But on the other side of things, really, at the end of the day, no matter what platform you're on and whatever rules they have or limitations they provide you, if you are able to create a storyboard outline of the visual representation of your product, that is really the most important aspect. And again, we're taking the optimization for the robots out of this, and we're just talking about customers right now, because we know for a fact that nobody reads anything anymore. 80% of people will skim every blog post, every news article they're reading, every product listing they're looking at. But if they will look at every single image that's provided to them. So, you know, if you think about if you're looking for a recipe and you're like, you know, best recipe for a mushroom, something, blah, blah, blah. And then you're looking at this bloody thing and it's like talking and talking like, well, you know, like I'm just like, get me to the damn freaking ingredients and how yeah. long I have to cook it and the temperature. If they don't have that information in the images, you just kind of keep scrolling back and forth and you totally miss it. But the smart ones who put the information in the bloody images to tell the story, you can get that information and in, in out again and, and like lickety split because really at the end of the day, they like to say that, you know, you have a seven second, ten, uh, seven second customer attention span nowadays where it used to be like 15 minutes, you know, 10 years ago. But the fact is, is that the brain can interpret an image in, thir in 13 milliseconds. So everyone's like, oh my God, seven seconds, that's not enough time. And it's like, actually, <laughs> the brain can interpret an image in 13 milliseconds. So you're pretty good to go. And it can interpret, you know, images 60,000 uh, 60, times faster than text as well. So we really have to like, you know, be like put the brain and the speed of the brain and how the brain and the eye you know, correlate and work together into the forefront of what we're doing. And so like, you know, obviously having lifestyle images, high quality images, talked about that before, and then product infographics is like what will make or break you. And, you know, a lot of people, they think they've done a great job with the product infographics, but usually a lot of the times they're not. And, and what I mean by product infographics, I'm sure pretty much everyone knows is you have an image and then you have some text on the image to explain who, what, where, how, why, and when, but you wanna take people through like a journey you know, that, that remember that story we're talking about, the experience, the quality, it makes, you know, it makes sense because a confused shopper will never buy, you know, at the end of the day. And so what I'd like to challenge people with is one, go into Google. And I think I might have said this before, but it's just such a great company to, to um, talk about. But go look at Burt's Bees. A lot of the graphics they use for their advertising and their marketing, they don't use any words whatsoever. They just use images they use graphics so if they have a lip balm that's a certain flavor they'll have a lip balm on the bottom of the image and they'll have a cup of hot chocolate pouring into it with like mint leaves floating around it you don't need to be told that it's mint chocolate flavored lip balm because you can clearly see it and your brain can decipher that information in 2.2 seconds and then if you go like old school which is way more fun is go look at old infomercials like they're the bloodiest best example for us to kind of like get the inspiration from because they're silly and they're fun and they're upbeat and they're like over the top. We totally get that. But they always start off like, this is what you want. And this is the problem. And this is how we solve it. We have a million sold. And, you know, they're like, da, 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 da. like they get all excited about it. But if you screenshot every little section of that little three minute segment or 67 segment, of the infomercial, it's literally a product listing done in images. You know what I mean? So it's, it's really interesting how we, we kind of know what we need to be doing. And there's lots of information out there to, to inspire us and help us. But a lot of people just don't put enough time, energy and effort into that part, which makes me like really sad because that's how you make your money is converting the bloody customer. And if you don't give them the information, they ain't gonna buy from you. They'll buy from your competition. So you have to like disqualify the competition for them by doing the research in advance. And there's ways of doing that and ways of not doing that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, you know, you you started talking about images, and I just sat there and I went, oh my gosh, you're bang on. How many Amazon, you know, the slide. You look at the slide deck and you go, why the book? Why the book? I'm not going to, I'm not, why do you have to have five paragraphs 
on this image. Take it mm -hmm. all away. Like it, that's what your bullets are for. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I, like mixing it up is great. You know, instructions. They don't have to be word for word boring. Make it engaging. Uh, your benefits. Make it engaging. Two, yeah. three words, or you know, a couple of bullets. A visual representation. If it's a bloody problem or thing for a dog, well, have a dog print, a dog bone, a picture of a dog. Like you yeah. don't actually have to say the word dog. <laughs> you, you, no, you don't. And you know, there's a lot. And I've seen. I just I was talking to a sixteen million dollar Amazon seller the other day. I went over to their listing. And it was all horrible. I don't know where they got their their images from. Now they've been on for about five years, so it they just took off. Um, they've tried launching new right, recently, and they didn't do so well because their images and their everything that they were using, all their strategies, really sucked. Uh, I don't know how the algorithm's still picking them up and how they're not suspended, but uh, just looking at everything, and it was a book. Their bullet points wow. were 550 characters. You know, they, anyways, you're not making like them. They were, they, were, they were doing the, the, the Amazon training courses from like 10 years ago. Well, that's it. Like ASM <laughs> one. Exactly what we you did know? 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As many keywords as we can get into this thing as possible, whether it's related stuff. or not. <laughs> no. And you know, it's also the engagement, right? If you can take a look and you have some, maybe a few engaging words or engaging images, just like you talked yeah. about Burt's Bees, if you have this really nice image and it, it, you can use stock, but if you go to Pixabay, you're going to get what you pay for. If you go to like Unsplash is, is really good for high quality images, but uh, for free, but you know, go yeah. to uh, an Adobe or go to, here's a thought, use a model, you know, pay for yeah. it. Uh, I, yes. I know like it's most... the best money you can spend. People don't spend the money on that. They like really shy with it. They're like, oh, a photographer, $500 or oh, $800 to get this done. I'm like, well, <laughs> people know a stock photo. Break you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for us, yeah, Sona it... is a great one too, actually. Which, you send where... your product to them. So, uh, so, so, Sona, S-O-O-N-A. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you send your product to them. You jump on like skype with them or whatever as they're setting up your photo shoot you can give them direction as they're bloody well doing it you see the pictures as they come in and they can do like you know time frame stopping images of opening the boxes and moving the items around or with models without models depending on the tier like it's it's pretty cool like i've had a bunch of the women in my uh women's mastermind community use their platform and they just they're, they're raving about it they're like this is the best thing since sliced bread and it's yeah. really pretty cost effective that's that's about the third time that name's come up. I've got to have to reach out and talk to them because, uh, yeah, they they've become uh, very, very highly recommended. Uh, so I got to check them out. You don't have a contact over there, do you? Uh, no, I don't actually at okay. this very moment. Time. I have not reached uh, out to them, but I know a lot of people who love them. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's another way that we could woo uh, our customers? Well, really, again, this is not rocket science, and I always feel like I'm slightly repeating myself, but you nailed it with your story about the the beer, you know, um, products that you had ordered and, and tested out. And and really, at the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, first and foremost, obviously, getting someone to your listing, that's like the robots part. And then when they reach your listing, do they feel good about what they're there? Like, again, that emotion, the place and the story, are you hitting all three of those sectors with fires and wires someone's brain? Because that is like one of the most important aspects because we know that 13% of people remember words on a list, but 93% will remember a story. If you ask them to, you know, remember a little bit of information, like 20 words on a list and then can you remember any of them? It's ridiculous. No one can remember anything, but a story, of course they can. Um, on that aspect and how they feel while they're there. Of course, the purchasing process, Amazon makes it beautifully amazing. If it's not Amazon, it's your own website. Make sure that's a seamless process. There's lots of different ways of people being able to give your money. <laughs> Sometimes you need Stripe and you need PayPal, depending on, you know, who the person wants to use, give them the options. And then when they get it at home, you nailed it. Like how you feel when you're opening up that product, 
it, it will make or break you. And, you know, I think a lot of people are starting to now understand that, you know, when we got started, at least when I got started, I threw my product into the cheapest bloody little bag with a little tape on it. You could possibly think of the tiny little insert because, you know, I was just getting going. I didn't really know any better. But nowadays people are like, okay, we actually have to build our product as if it's shelf ready. You know, as if it was going to go on, you know, the Walmart mm -hmm. shelf, it has the front, the side, the backs, it has all the pertinent information, which is technically the exact same information that you have in your listing if it's properly optimized, especially with the visual representation we're talking about. Um, but, you know, again, we're trying to make sure that we hit hard and we hit home when it comes to how the person feels emotionally about that product. And so having customer retention strategy in there is great, providing that extra support. Maybe there's you know a video series on how to use it, or maybe you have a challenge that you're inviting people to. I have clients all the time who, you know, depending on what their audience is, but I had one of them that worked with undergarments and they were really pushing for you know women to feel amazing about their bodies, no matter their size, shape, you know, whether it's, you know, big or small. And so they would have this consistently running challenge that they would send out a journal and they invite the women over into this community and they would coach them and counsel them. But they weren't selling their products. They were providing an experience and a way of life, a, a way to help with the mental mindset of, of individuals to make them experience just a, a better life at the end of the day. So it's, you know, the packaging, how it what it smells like, how you open it and how you are extending that feedback loop and that ability to, you know, one, move the customer from Amazon, obviously over into your own email list or whatnot, so you can capture them and, and build that billable asset. But two, like, what else are you doing? Because a lot of people just stop at the sales, like you gave me your money, I'm done, I'm out, like, there's no more work for me to do. But really, at the end of the day, the more that you can do after the sale, the better it is for not one, your, your company, and of course, the easiest customer to have is a customer that you already have. But people love to rave about what they love. And that's free advertising right there. And it is like worth its weight in gold. And if you don't take that into consideration, if you don't build that thing out, then you're really shooting yourself in the foot because, you know, people are building Amazon businesses to turn around and flip them just like the dot com days. <laughs> Why can't you get into that, into that, you know, space as well just by putting these tiny little extra steps in there? And like you said, it's the small things that count. So, yeah inserts you could put something as simple as just tag me or, or tag yep. us and it could yep. be entered into a contest or even free and now you you've got those people who become passionate about your product tagging you you can use yep. that you can repurpose it and also um i i talked about this just recently on the podcast <laughs> getting people to uh just scan a qr code mm -hmm. get them over get them to answer. We talked about this just recently about answering a quiz. So you can segment mate your, um, your list. And now you're starting yeah. to understand who they are. And now when they come over, you could drive them over to different funnels for different new products that appeal to them. Yep. So yeah, uh, absolutely. There, yeah, you just can't, there is some homework that you have to do. You know, you have like to, anything. Yeah, like, like anything. But at the end of the day, if you're not using that list that you're getting of all these people who want your product or uh you know paul baron he's my partner over at tca yep so he's got he's super awesome <laughs> he, he is awesome well i'm not gonna say you that. guys are like you know the dynamic duo <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't tell him <laughs> okay his, his between head, you and me his head uh so uh, anyway um paul has this swim diaper it's everywhere Nobody's beating his brand. He tells everybody his brand because he's not worried about it. His right. customers are so loyal, they won't go anywhere else. And he's built that brand from scratch. He's built brand ambassadors. He's constantly emailing and they're not, this is Wilford, Wilford Lightheart was on. That's where we were talking about this. He was constantly letting them know value, 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 no promotions. Just, you know, yep. this just different benefits and things, just being in, in, in front of uh, the brand. And then yep. he built up these brand ambassadors. He's got a group that will do anything. He, they've, he received 2,000 photos from his brand ambassadors in three months. Wow. That was crazy. There and you then, go then. And then, uh, oh, I need, 
and this actually happened. I need some videos to put on Amazon Live. Within the weekend, he got 30. That's how you do it. There That's you go. That's how you do it. You know? That's awesome. Oh my and, God, I love that. Yeah, so building up your, your customer base, but your, your influencers or your brand ambassadors, they're customers. Yeah. You know, they're paying yeah. for the product. So anyways, that's just, uh, that's one of the ways that I love I, I, when Paul first told me that story and that's why I got into business with him was, you know, how to build your app. brand through customers. Yeah. And the yeah. extra mile is never crowded. And that's why, like you said, he has no problem telling people what his brand is and what he's doing. Like the extra mile is never crowded really is what it is at the end of the day. You put that a little extra energy and effort. And like another fun thing as well that I did with one of my clients is we actually did a whole TikTok segment. They had an 80s product. And so, you know, it's it's fun. It's upbeat. And so we got a mini influencer in TikTok and sent them a bunch of stuff. They went way above and beyond and made this crazy dance and whole kerfuffle with this product. And it's an 80s product. And so we started inviting everyone else because, you know, TikTok's about like the viral aspect of like a dance or whatever. And so the customers started getting the same product and started following the influencers dances and everything. And then like, you know, we had like, obviously like the codes in there. If you want to be able to do this as well, go buy the product here. So it made this like massively huge loop between Amazon to TikTok back to Amazon again. It was really, really crazy. It was super cool. But the, the other thing as well, when it comes to, you know, customer retention, um, there's another company, um, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's Lunchbox, I'm pretty sure it's Lunchbox. And they have a really amazing retention strategy and sort of ambassador strategy where they don't do the traditional if you buy this, we'll give you 10% off or 20% off or whatever. Cause it's like, everyone does that. Mm -hmm. They know, because like you said, with the serve, the surveys and segmenting the people, they did all that work. And they really ended up finding out that the people who buy their backpacks and their products, and they're supposed to be anti theft, you know, if you're traveling around the world, you know, type of backpacks and whatnot, that their customers are concert goers, they're uh, conference goers, they're people who are outdoorsy and obviously like to travel and whatnot. So their um, sort of like their ambassador program slash um, the ability to bring people back in instead of giving them a discount, they collected points that can go towards concert tickets or events, you know, tickets for some sort of conference or whatever you're doing. So like music and people and mingling, like they just went straight into what can we do to enrich your life even more? It's not about us technically selling more. And because people had, again, that emotion, the place, the story, you know, they really put in that time, energy and effort and understanding who their people are and what they love to do. And they just like, just drove it right home. And they have a killer back end, like, you know, um, like you're saying, Paul has there. And it's, it's pretty amazing when you put a little energy and effort and you get to know the people who are buying from you, what you can do that separates you from your competition. Right. I forgot all about the giveaway today. I'm just oh, seeing yes. Wheel of Kelsey's coming up. <laughs> Ashley, what is the giveaway today? Yeah, well, today is about, uh, it's a strategy session so we can get on, we can take a look at what you're doing, get some wonderful feedback so you can take actionable steps right away to optimize your listings for the buyer behavior aspect. Uh, and that's what the giveaway is today. It's uh, but it's $250 value. And um, I'd, be lo I'd love to help anyone, you know, get some clarity on what they're doing with their listing and, and how I can help them move forward. Fantastic. So if you'd like to uh, attend that meeting or have a chance to win a session with that, $250 too cheap, I'd put that at a thousand. But anyways, 250 well, that's, that's 15 minutes. The, the thousand dollar one is an hour. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. But uh, anyways, it's well worth it. If you're interested, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. If you want to enter twice, tag two people and we'll get you that second entry. Okay. Uh -huh. <clears throat> now, I was just about to talk about a, a, another um, strategy that I heard, but uh, hey, we can move on. <laughs> I just, yeah. I just uh, wanted to talk a bit more about, you know, what can sellers do quickly and easily to update Ooh. their uh, their listings or their conversion rates? Yeah. Well, I have a fun little tool that actually can help people do that, really? which is pretty awesome. Yeah. If you go to productinfographic.com, it's a tiny little mini training series where it takes you through my three-step process of how to extract all the information you need 
and you input the information on the sheet and then it auto populates the exact bullet points that you should be using in the smallest bite sized pieces possible into your product images. And then there's 175 drag and drop uh, templates ready to go for 18 the top selling categories. And within three minutes, you can take your existing product images and or stock images and throw them into these templates, add your little bullet points, and you can upload and get your listing that's more optimized and ready for that, that customer experience that we were talking about. So productinfographic.com is, is where you can go to make it happen really quickly, really easily with the stuff that you already have. And you don't have to worry about working the graphic designer or anyone else and waiting weeks and weeks and weeks of this back and forth. You can take, you know, take it all into your own hands and get it done within minutes. I love it. I've never heard of that. So what was the yeah. what was the app called or the site called again? Productinfographic.com. All right. Kelsey's already on it. He's got it on there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So again, going back to uh talking about the the listing, that is one way. Do you think are there any other things that you can do to your product listing that a customer would look at and you can optimize that customer's experience? Yeah, if you know, it, it also, yeah, well, of course, I mean, we're talking about Amazon, we have the top half, and then we have the bottom half. And right. our job is to make sure we don't, we don't want them to scroll down. Really, at the end of the day, if you're on your desktop, we don't want them to scroll down, because we know Amazon is going to try to make people jump, like, you know, here's 20 options, then here's 20 more options, then you keep going down further than 20 more options. And it's just, it's just volatile, the further you go down. And then hopefully you've done a great job with your A plus content and or, you know, the, the images in the section in the middle section of your page. And then hopefully you also have uploaded images in the or images, excuse me, videos in the bottom section um, of like the who, what, where, unboxing, you know, uh, any sort of customer reviews or whatnot into that space. And just try to take up as much space as, as possible to, to optimize your listing. But the other thing that, you know, I think a lot of people especially on Amazon kind of come into is that the pricing strategy, like, of course, we have to take all into consideration, you know, what, it, what it costs to move the product around and sell the product and all the fees and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you look at the very small differentiating factor between super high end brands, and everybody else, and super high end brands are straight to the dollar. So if you walk into Louis Vuitton or Gucci or anywhere else, it's $2,400. It's $300 for a belt. They're straight across the line. They don't provide any sort of discount because psychologically, as soon as we go like $29.99, now it's psychologically sort of like less of a value type of product and it's cheaper. But it also depends, obviously, on your positioning of your product line. You know what I mean? So you also want to sort of take into consideration, are you providing that psychological imprint, you know, imprint of what the pricing strategy is going to be and how people are going to anticipate an experience with your brand through the numbers that they're seeing? You know, are you going to have like, this is the manufacturer price minus and this is the sale price, it was 29. And now it's $30. So you really want to like position yourself appropriately to what you're trying to convey about your brand. It's like a luxury brand wouldn't provide discounts like that. Generally speaking, it would be very specific or very seasonal or very, or none at all. Like there's lots of people, you know, lots of brands that don't provide any discounts whatsoever. They don't have to. <laughs> so, you know, we were talking about like how people feel and how they're experiencing, like we have all these nuances and all these things that are pre-programmed in our brains as humans and as shoppers and consumers um, that we should take into consideration as well, other than just, you know, the robot optimization, the image optimization for customer buying experience, but it's also, you know, how you're positioning yourself through the numbers. I love that you're talking oh. about how to position yourself through the numbers. Uh, I had a, a talk the other day, uh, and this happens quite a bit, but people hear about perceived value. So they take yes. their $20 item and they want to sell it for $70, but they don't provide the perceived value experience. Yeah. They keep the same crappy photos. They say, keep the same crappy, you know, listing optimization. Their A plus looks like it was done by a dog. Um, you know, all everything that you you need to have perception, high perception. Their e their uh, their web page sucks. Their e uh, their yeah. social media is terrible. All of this combined you need to have consistency just like a you know yeah. just like a franchise it's got to be everything's got to be consistent totally. with the brand. so 
I, I it's hilarious. I did. I I was on a talk the other day uh, or yesterday with our um, group the Centurion League, and. I had just pulled, I, I didn't, I was just telling them about it, but I, I had just pulled three tiers of dead mud. So dead mud, oversaturated product. I had a client who wanted to get into dead mud. I was saying, don't get into dead mud, but dead sea mud. And um, yeah. anyways, I went, I did some research. The, I went from 75 to about $90. The, the, the one that was written in the middle, about $80 was a three and a half ounce jar. The next group... Wow was in the the 40 range to 75 and the next group were six dollars and 95 cents for an eight ounce jar you can see it on amazon uh up to that next level and i looked at all three and i said this is the perfect example if you want to deal with the bottom dwellers go ahead if you want to come out as the test market in the middle you can or you can stay there but if you want to be that luxury brand, you can do it. And what was interesting is the the three and a half ounce jar was outperforming most of the others on the high end. You know, it, it was just crazy. But everybody else was selling eight ounce, 16 ounce, three and a half ounce for more than any of them. And it was a private label seller. So... I love it. Yep. Yeah. It's like, you don't need more. You need the best. <laughs> yeah. You know, we talk about the knife, you know, we talk about, you know, diff different kitchen utensils that you take out yeah. and you, you, you know, you start at 49, you end up at 120, uh, 124, same knife, just different, different look. You know, the packaging is different. The quality of the listing is different. The whole user experience is different. Yeah, that, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and I've had, I've heard such good things with your Patreon membership with the members that are in there and they're getting like this, like dedicated information because you guys do like you do so many different things in that program that provides this to them on a regular basis. Is it, is it not like I've heard such great things about it. Can, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Because I'm just like, I need oh. to know more about your Patreon <laughs> membership because it's, it's pretty freaking cool when, when people have direct access to you. Like, well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is I, it, this is uh Oh man, that's the first time a guest has sorry, asked me I that. On the spot. But yeah, <laughs> but we we do have like we provide free content. That's the key. We provide free content. We want to continue to provide free content, but we've decided that we were going to go out and we were going to try to create value, and bring in one-on-one -on -one training or one-on-one, -on -one, but very like limited training, uh, access to me, access to Kels, um, other uh, types of. A huge like free press releases free this free that just Ooh. some of our, our product like the first time you join it um you get it just it's over a thousand bucks i think worth of freebies so i'm not talking about affiliates i'm talking about just yep. okay you get this you get this you get this so anyways we wanted to make sure that there was value there and that every month that people um so uh, and we had well, just we press actually releases had, themselves like that's oh. huge like dude like i'm like i'm the media i'm like i love being in the media i love the media aspect and getting into magazines and articles and tv and the whole nine yards and it is hard if you don't have a sherpa someone to like explain where to go and what to do and how to leverage all that and you are able to provide all that to them just with being part of your membership that's crazy i've never yeah. even heard of that <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you've got to come in and do one of the trainings. Sounds good to me. I love <laughs> okay. it. You can break down I, I, all the image stuff. <laughs> I backed you into a corner on this one. But one of the other things that I, I, I do like, and we can move on, but um, is a little bit different than a podcast, is it's action-oriented steps. So mm -hmm. you know, when, when people come in, it's, it's hard to do. We can talk about them here, but here's a PDF or here's an SOP yep. on how to yes. do it. And that's where the value also comes in. So we, we had a, we had our first call the other day and it was fun. You know, the, the group is, is, is growing and uh, I can't wait. So we'll see where this goes. It was something, you know, again, on the porch, having a cigar and where can we create more value? So that's what we came up with. 
I think that's great because we're so inundated with content from obviously 2020, so many people at home, so many repivoting their businesses are like, oh my God, what am I doing? I got to get out there. I got to get out there, get out there more. But the fact of the matter is, is like we're bombarded with so much crap. Our brain can like, we have like over 6,000 images of marketing and information that hit our, hit us, but we are only can actually notice like 2,500, I think is what it is out of all of that. So everything mm. is just kind of like deer in like the blinders kind of scenario. But the fact is, is that no one takes action. And the fact that you're you're literally walking people through actionable steps so they can see results, which creates that euphoria. It's like making a checklist and then they literally tell you, write it down on a checklist and just cross it off. And you'll instantly feel the endorphins in your brain just fire and wire and you just feel like a million bucks. And you're creating that opportunity for people by having them take action, feeling amazing about that action, which therefore snowballs into, you know, more motivation to move forward because you can't get motivated unless you actually take action. It's not the other way around in my personal opinion. <laughs> so that's so awesome. I love Thank that. You. Thank you. And you know, with action, either if I, I'm at an event or whatever I'm doing, if you just take one thing and take action, you're doing probably 90% more than anybody else. 100%. Yep. 100%. So, oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Man, you guys are like just totally killing it. Like no matter where I turn, you are stepping up. You're a community leader. You're an authority in the space. You keep raw rawing really amazing people and creating these communities and support and value. Uh, I'm just super honored, one, to be here, two, to know you and to witness all the amazing things that you're doing for the e-commerce space. Like, I, I want you on TV. You should definitely be on TV and raw rawing this community because um, <laughs> I just think you're an amazing spokesperson. Now, and hold it. My heart, Kelsey is amazing, too. Like, you guys are just, you know, dynamic duo. Well, I think both Kelsey and my heads are ready to explode because, uh, <laughs> you know, anyway, so I, you know what? I don't take compliments that great, but I turn red. I turn really red. <laughs> My glasses steam up. But uh, anyways, thank you for that. All right. So we're almost at the hour. Wow. I can't believe that. Yeah. We're already done. Holy yeah. well, <laughs> Any Any last tips for, for people listening today? Oh, man. You know, mentorship and oh, flexing so your failure muscle. That's my biggest thing. You know, I've I'm come from a pro uh, athletic background, Olympic background and whatnot. Um, and flexing your failure muscle is one of the most important things in the entire world. We are indoctrinated as children in school that F is horrible. You can't fail. You can't, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we grow up as adults and we're afraid to do anything. You know, there, there's no reason to not do something because of fear. Fear is very short lived. It's 2.2 it's seconds and then it's gone, you know? And so whenever we do anything, it's like, you know, you're working out, the muscle gets stronger, the more you work out that bloody muscle. So flex your failure muscle, because as soon as you fail, the easier it becomes for you to kind of get back up and move forward. It's just a problem solving skills, really what it is at the end of the day. And again, it's short lived. And really on the side of flexing your failure muscle and being comfortable with things not working out for you, because sometimes one door closes and the window opens kind of scenarios, get mentorship. You know, like the best in the world, I don't care who you are or where you like, look at everyone who's ever accomplished anything amazing. They did not do it on their own. They had mentorship and they have different mentorships for different aspects of their business or their lives. You know, if you're a pro athlete, you have a nutritionist, you have a stretching coach, you have, you know, workout coach, you have like, I mean, you have someone for every single aspect that's going to keep you on the path to the the greatness is really what it is because we're human beings. We're going to fall off the path and we need to have people to help us stay on it. If you are a business, if you're looking at, you know, Fortune 100 companies or whatever, they all have people in their bloody corner who are helping them with different aspects of their lives, mental game, you know, strategy, you know. So it's just like put someone who you love and who represents you and they have the vibrational tendencies that you like. They, they stand for something that you, you work with and they have already accomplished what it is that you're trying to accomplish and do whatever you can to get a seat at the table with them. Because not only is, you know, like the people that you hang around with, like you're going to get the vibrational tendency, you're going to get the same income level. You know, like we all know that six degrees of separation, hang out with the people that you want to be like or whatnot. But then the opportunities present themselves. They open up their Rolodex to you as well, which is pretty amazing. They, you know, they open up your eyes to things that you would never even know about because they're just one step you know, or two steps or five steps higher than than you or whatever it might be. But just surround yourself with amazing people and pay to be at the table next to the person that you want to learn from is my number one thing at the end of the day. Those words of wisdom, uh, you know, if you go to a free mastermind, 
they could be really great masterminds. However, yeah. if you're if you're paying for something, you're probably getting more because you're you're getting the other experts like uh, I don't know. I've always found that a paid mastermind, you get what you paid for. And yeah. a mentor, uh, yeah, a mentor, I, I can tell you right now, like I've got a mentor. I've had a mentor for many, many years and has been a different mentor. So my first mentors are, we're really good friends or excellent friends. But when I grew out of that mentor and I went into a different program, it's costing me. I pay, I, I pay, hey. it, but some, you could reach out and just, you know, see if people will help you out. But um, yeah. mentorship is so bloody important. I, I agree 100%. I didn't it know is. you were going to go down that path, but. Oh, yeah. So... I have three people in my business all the time. I have someone in sales. I have someone in media and um, I have a, a head game. So I work with like hypnotherapists, like people yeah. to keep like my mindset on check because, you know, I'm on the floor crying like a baby in the fetal position when I'm freaking out to do something like the rest of the human beings. I full disclosure. I'm pretty open book about that kind of crap. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I have people who help me like making sure that, you know, whatever it is that I'm doing in different capacities makes sense. But, you know, you bring the people in for the different areas where you need help in or where you're working on right now. And sometimes that mentorship can be you can get what you need done in like three months or six months, maybe a year. It could be short. It could be long. But they're there to accomplish what that goal was or what that task was. And then sometimes you don't need them anymore. And then you're ready and you're open for like the next person of the next level of the next yeah. thing you're going to accomplish. So it's not like you have to stick with that person for your life by any stretch of the imagination. They can come and go, um, you know, by all means. But I highly recommend working with at least, you know, two to three people in different areas of your business uh, to really help you, you know, stay on track. Because as a solopreneur, like we don't have a freaking, you know, water cooler to talk to our peoples about like ideas or things that we're doing and getting outside perspective. We got to pay for it nine times out of 10. Or we're asking people who are not qualified to provide us their information or their feedback, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you really are serious and I highly recommend you find someone who can help you in different areas of your business that can really help you move forward and, and scale your business, scale your mindset and, and all that fun thing. So, yeah. It's just one of those things. I just, I love that stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it's also uh, and you don't want to use like they're not a shrink, but no. you can go through some emotional times. You could be going through a business oh, failure. Yeah. You could go through a variety of different things, and that mentor could most likely have already oh, yeah. gone through oh, it. Yeah. You know, if you've had yep. failures and. I like a baby with my people. Oh, hundred percent. I'm like, oh my God, this is falling apart. It's not working, you know, and they're happy to help see me through it. Yeah. So, it, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, mentoring is, is very important. And if you haven't checked into it, check it out and get get yourself a mentor. Uh, all right. Yeah. I for, completely forgot, but Kelsey, I think we have some questions. Oh yeah. Sorry about uh, that, everybody. Oh. <laughs> We're I'm having a little too blurry. much fun. <laughs> These all guys right. switch. So, Norm's all good. I know. Now, now it's great. me, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to fix this later. But anyways, ignore my uh, fuzziness on my webcam, but we have a question from Rad. Um, I think uh, it, it's how how can a package tell about your product? Like, what are the ways that you Honestly, can use Honestly, the best packaging? thing to do. Yeah. You know, like, as I said before, you if you can do it if you have the time the energy the effort i highly recommend you build your product packaging as if it's going to go sit on a shelf in a store really is what it is at the end of the day and so when we're talking about the customer experience through visual representation and making sure we're using visual components to tell a story whether it's icons or people or locations like it's it's a house product so you have a picture of a house you know that kind of scenario with the smallest bite sized bullet point of information that can just clearly nail down the who, what, where, how, why, and when, you kind of take what you're doing for your image aspect and the information aspect on your product listing and the visual part, and you kind of like transfer it over to a, a box. It's kind of what it is in, in a nutshell, really, at the end of the day. And then of course, like Norm said, go check out your competition, go look at other packages, see what they're doing great, what you like about what they're doing, what they kind of suck at or what you're confused about. And that's all the information you need in order to create your own packaging. And so depending on who your manufacturer is, they 
you know, they will either have box, you know, um, options within house, or they use a third party, depending on how that works, but they're going to have a die cut, they're going to have an actual template that they can provide you of what their shape and size and dimensions of their box are. And you hand that thing right over to a graphic designer that you had hired, and they can just take all the information that you've already created for your listing, if you're kind of doing this after the fact, mind you, not before the fact, uh, and they can kind of transfer that information over into the appropriate size and dimensions of your new box. So hopefully that's helpful. And don't go cheap on the material. It costs pennies to get better yes, material. Yes, thicker, 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 thicker. Oh my God, we have that thin, it's supposed to be a box, but it like caves in on itself. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, yeah, no. <laughs> and then Amazon does the, the drop test as well anyways. And if it yeah. kinks up in the corner or dings or whatever, Amazon's going to say, yeah, no, no, thank you. Take this back. <laughs> Okay, Kels. Oh, and another thing hey, as well about the and, packaging. Uh, um, I, I, there's one thing I know for a fact that Amazon's starting to do. They are now um, moving in the direction of utilizing people's actual packaging for shipping. So I know that they're coming, like this is in the future, but instead of taking all the boxes and throwing them inside their Amazon typical box that shows up at your house and things like flopping around in there, they're now moving into more of the direction where your product packaging is actually the shipping container as well. So you want to yeah. be prepared for that and make sure that it is thick and it can handle being thrown around um, as well. Just on that note, um, I know we're over time, but I want to share this example. Com competitive analysis, again, getting the product shipped over to us, did it with um, three bottles. So this is a bottle product. One came, it was in a beautiful package. The other two came a bubble wrapped the bubble wrap two were more expensive than the uh the packaged one okay but a couple months later the packaged one ended up overtaking the the other two because of the the quality of the packaging now yeah the bottle it was in a beautiful box the other two came in with this bubble wrap that really you know was was not a great it, it didn't look great at all. It, it actually cheapened the product. So you go and you spend a little bit more and oh my gosh, you know, there, and this was something that would repeat every 30 days. So anyways, wow. yeah, just, just by doing that. something simple. This is small things that matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like really? <laughs> Sorry, Kelsey, we just keep talking. We're having way too much fun. No, no, no worries. <laughs> Um, I also just wanted to shout out um, some members from our Beer Nation. I noticed that um, I really love our community for this, but uh, they'll send each other their own products and they'll give themselves like video testimonies using their products and opening the products. So I know Marsha and Rad and Tony have all done amazing things helping Beer Nation communities out um, doing video testimonies. And I, I think that's just awesome. So um, I just want to so do awesome. a quick shout out to them. That's um, why being part of a community is so important. It's the people you network with. Like, that's awesome. I love that. Okay. So from another question from Rosalind, who puts together the package to go to Amazon? Uh, need pretty stuff inside. Insert with QR code, pretty interior box, then box to ship. So I guess how do so you... It sounds like you're starting out from the sounds of it. It sounds like so. you're starting out. From, from really at the end of the day, it's the manufacturer that you're using. Hopefully they either have boxing options on site and or they use a third party. But really, you just look at what your competition's doing and kind of figure out, you know, like what the pretty stuff inside is supposed to be. I, I'm just kind of going through this. Um, and then when you're working with a graphic designer to take your ideas and put it onto the actual box part itself. Um, so it prints out the way that you want it to print out. Usually either the manufacturer can put it all together for you and ship it, or you can have the boxes all super flat and you can ship the items separately to you and you can build it in, in your garage or your own warehouse. It really kind of depends on how you're doing it. Um, and then the QR code, there, there are um, apps online that can allow you to create a QR code very simply and easily that you can add um, to your inserts or your packaging. And, and I'm not a total expert when it comes to QR codes by, by all means. So I couldn't tell you exactly where to go, but maybe Norm, <laughs> maybe yeah. you have a better direction to send them for the QR code part. They right now, uh, a free service, you can go to QR monkey, uh, and you can get static. You, I, I think you can do dynamics over there. App sumo, like as of last mm. week, app sumo has QR something, but it's on sale now for $39 lifetime membership. 
And uh, that might be a place to go. And you can do static and dynamic um, uh, QR codes there. Uh, one of the other things I was going to mention about the packaging side, if you have, let's say you have a soap, you know, that you're looking, don't get into soap. Uh, that's my product. <laughs> but but uh, anyways, go to Etsy, go to um, uh, Pinterest, check around for the different types of packaging ideas. And what we did for our um, different type, our, our packaging is we sent it to the manufacturer. Now you can also go to a, uh, you can go and find your own packaging manufacturer, but if the manufacturer provides it, you can just show them pictures and they could say, yeah, yeah whether they can do it or not. Yeah. Visuals. You Visuals. hold together as much visual representation of what you like and what you don't like. So you can make sure that whoever you're speaking to, no matter what language they is their first, you know, first language, there's going to be no miscommunication. I, I've, I've written and published six children's books and got bestsellers out of them. And I'd have to tell you, I had to use visuals and arrows and examples like, you know, <laughs> crazy to make sure I could get that the message across as to what I wanted. And, and that was a really good life lesson. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we just have uh, two more questions. It yep. looks like uh, from Nick's stuff. Ashley, what's the most transforming in terms on increased sales compared to before the image lifestyle image you've done? So what's the um, worst turn into the best? Um, well, re okay. So the, for the before and after for the images at the end of the day, my last client that we worked on in a matter of less than 60 days, so it was more like 30, 40 days where they had just a static image of their product. It was just like, this is the product on a white background. <laughs> that was it. And then all we did, they did not have ads running. We did not do literally anything else. Um, is just changed out the image into an infographic, as we explained before. So it's like the product and then it had like a few little bullet points as to like what it was or, or who it was. And then we had a storyboard outline and we had six images that took them through that story of the problem that the customer is having, like the who, the what, the where, the how, the why, the when. And, and what I mean by that is like who it's for, what it's for, when do you use it? Why do you use it? When do you use it? You know, like all those really important factors that people need to know how to use the product and understand the product or whatnot. And in about 40 days, we had 120% increase of doing literally nothing else. Yeah. Because they're already getting traffic. They're already getting sales, but they had a shitty conversion rate. So I hope I can say that is <laughs> really what it was. Because you know the customer didn't know what to buy and uh you know they got confused and they left and the competition was doing better and and just doing that one tiny little thing, we did 10 times better than the competition because the competition wasn't putting as much elbow grease and energy and effort into positioning what we were what we were doing with just the human buying part of the listing. So that that was really fun just to just to see that. So it was pretty cool. I got a good one for you. So yeah, let's right. hear it. So client came 18 months, $1,000 in sales. Okay. Uh, anyways, looking at the packaging, it was horrible. It was for toe wart remover. All right. Oh, so <laughs> powder, powder, How do blue, you make that sexy? <laughs> powder blue box, uh, kind of an orange, uh, a yellowish tinge on a foot that has all these warts and they had drops coming down. Okay. So it, it looked like the warts were oozing. And so I'm looking at it going, I would never buy this product. All we did it was a it was an uplift on the brand as well so it's not just images but we changed it from an ugly package to this white green blue like a wellness more natural package put it change the bottles from like brown to green and made it like just look nice 7000 the first month 20 27,000 the second month $68,000 the third month we got it up to 124,000 bucks a month before they ran out Boom. of inventory. Now, there you go. Just horrible, oozing, warty toes, and just making the pictures look like the more lifestyle pictures, not focusing on ugly toenails, having people walking around and, you know, showing lifestyle and yeah, the end so result. The end result. No more problems. Yeah. So, what can pictures do? That's what pictures can do. You know, it, it was what I find funny is like, don't judge a book by its cover is what we're all taught as children. And we'd love to follow that rule, but we're humans. We're always going to judge and we're going to judge in 13 milliseconds. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> okay, sorry, Kels. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Does a model does, uh, um, impacting make a difference? Yes. Yeah, it totally does. Oh my God, over exaggerated facial um, features like big smiles, it, it it hits us. Like it's it's how our brain is conceptualized. Like we actually know that scientifically proven, we can make ourselves happy happier in sixty seconds if we just smile. But if you look at ourselves in the mirror and stare at ourselves smiling in the mirror, we can make it happen even faster. Like we can totally change our whole mind shift and how our perce perceived value in our outside look is ourselves. And so if we know that the brain is that powerful and in our, in ourselves and how we maneuver, and then if we look at someone else, we can instantly like feel good or feel bad depending on the, the facial features and the positioning. Like if they're hunched over, they're not healthy. If they're like sitting upright and the shoulders are back, they're healthy. And we take to people who are healthy and who look good and who are vibrant. So absolutely, you know, depicting that into your images. Definitely. Now I am healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're going to judge. Everyone's going to judge. It is what it is. So, you know, get on the bandwagon. <laughs> okay. And our last question for today from Amar. Uh, does it matter when where the FN SKU is placed on the packaging? Can we place it on the back and totally omit GTIN? For Amazon. Yeah, you can put your FNSK, and, and bleh, FNSKU on it and totally, you know, remove the UPC or whatever. You just want to make sure that it's aesthetically pleasing wherever the hell you put it on the packaging. And it has to be scannable because that's what Amazon needs. So really, it's just uh, where does it look best on the packaging? But I'm sure, Norm, you have some really great tips on that one. Well, the biggest one would probably be when you're when you're taking the FN SKU, if you're downloading the and you're giving it to your packaging company, get them to remove the title. That's just, you know, you, it's just the code in the ASIN and, and uh, yeah. that's fine. And it could look fine like on our, any of our boxes. But the one thing you have to keep keep into consideration or take into consideration is that where are you going to be selling it? Are you doing anything off Amazon? Right. Yes. Then you need a barcode. <laughs> yeah. Then, <laughs> then you have to go and, and get that GTIN. Yeah. But um, yeah. anyway, two different yeah. packages. No problem. Just make it clear. And I just find that if you take the title off, because you know when you get those stickers, it looks horrible when you get the title, you know, on the bottom. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes it's usually what your first put your listing title is, and then you change it thereafter, but it's still the old title that doesn't yeah. actually work for what you're doing. And half the words are cut off and it makes no sense. So yeah, I love that one. Yeah. Okay. Is that it, Kels? That's it. I think it's uh, time for Wheel of Kelsey. All right. All right, bring it on, bring it on. It's time for the wheel of There we go. I love All the right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you everyone for entering today's Wheel of Kelsey. Uh, yeah, if you are thank the winner, please. Uh, Email me at k at lunchwithnorm.com. Uh, this goes out to especially the YouTubers. Um, there's no way for me to contact you afterwards. So you need to contact me, k at lunchwithnorm.com, so I can connect you. So uh, here we go. Three, two, one. This is so much fun. It's Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? <laughs> Simon? Is is Simon? It Simon? Simon? Simon. Yeah. All right, Simon. <laughs> I don't know who you are, Simon, but I'm really excited to get All to know right. you. <laughs> Ashley, wait till you see his right. product. He's 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 uh, a very successful Amazon seller. He's been on the podcast wait. before, and uh, oh, just we can I always up. say this. I always say this because I I don't have any other listeners. I don't think that have their products being used by the royal family. Uh, you know, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> that is just a little cool. Yeah. No, but. You know. uh, not a big okay. deal. <laughs> so Simon's done this before, so he knows, you know, just get the he information the over to Kelsey. Yeah. 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 I love connecting with amazing people who are, you know, taking action and enjoying life as, as we go. So I'm just super excited to even have that connection. So thank you so much for playing and thanks so much for watching. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. All right. That was I know. Nice. I can I could talk forever. I could keep you on here forever and you'd be like, I didn't oh, even have lunch yet, awesome. actually. This is that ridiculous. <laughs> So how do people get a hold of you or see what you're doing? Yeah, uh, well, you can go to thehiddenrulesexpert.com. 
that's my site where you can kind of get to, you know, know me and all the fun things that that I'm doing for, for the most part in the e-commerce space. Um, and, it, you know, of course, anywhere else is pretty much the hidden rules. So Facebook, Ashley, the hidden rules or Amazon with Ashley or Instagram, Ashley dot hidden rules. <laughs> all over the place is hidden rules, something for the most part. <laughs> well, I thank you again. I mean, this is awesome. We got to get you on again. Uh, Kelsey will send out you the link right after this. Yeah, maybe uh, next podcast. time we do like mindset stuff because no one does talks go. about that in the ecom space, which is drives me nuts. <laughs> well, we can definitely do that. Um, I think that would be that's a yeah, absolutely a great topic. But thank you so much for being on. Thank you as well. I really appreciate it. you guys are amazing. I love everything that you do. I love how much support you're providing people. You're just a beacon for all of us. And I just, I want to say thank you to you and Kels and to everyone who is in your circles. I know you have a lot of partners and you do so much good for our community. It's, it's just, it's amazing. So just thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Ashley. Okay. That's it. The podcast is over. We're not too late, you know, an hour and 15 minutes. That's pretty good. Ashley's just a ton of knowledge. I love her. She's got just so much information and she's one of these people that are just willing to share, which again is just so amazing. So on uh, Monday, we have my old buddy. Actually, I bought PR Reach from Rob Burns. Rob Burns um, is a uh, decided to get into more video production, and he now owns uh, telepathy, video telepathy. And he's going to be on talking about uh, how to use video ads in your Amazon listings. But before I get Kels back on, just wanted to thank our sponsor, Global Wired Advisors a leading digital investment bank focused on optimizing the business sale process. For more information, please contact them at globalwiredadvisors.com. Kelsey, where are you? Yeah, that was awesome podcast. Thank you everyone who uh, tuned in today. Amar, thank you so much. Love the feedback. Uh, also, uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, he said, uh, thank you, Norman Kels, for bringing guests that know their stuff. Ashley definitely knows her stuff. So Absolutely. thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you, Tom. Um, Marsha, to everyone. Really appreciate you guys. It's been an awesome year, over a year now. So um, always great to see our community and what's happening there. Uh, but really quickly, if you're not a part of our group yet, please join us. Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA and e-commerce collective. That's our Facebook group. Um, that's where all the fun stuff happens. Um, and yeah, I, I haven't run this past you yet, but I think oh, no. for our 200th episode, we should have some of the beer nation members on the podcast. So I think we can do a little contest where anyone who wants to be on the show can come and enter and, uh, we'll have them kind of like what we did with Marsha, Simon, Raja, and everyone else, Mark, um, that was on the podcast before. So yeah, I think it would be, be fun. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. So we'll do that uh, sometime in the future. We have to figure out the dates for that. But um, yeah, uh, Facebook, YouTube, our YouTube channel is almost at a thousand subscribers, which is awesome. So that's Norman Ferrar. That's where all the uh, highlights and full episodes are. Also, if you're looking for the events, um, if you're looking for the guests for the month, you can always go to our Lunch with Norm website, lunchwithnorm.com. We also have our membership area where uh, you can find Patreon if you're you don't know how to spell it because I know it's a little tricky. <laughs> I still spell it wrong. But um, yeah, thank you, everyone. And I think that's it from well, me. The only thing which is doing, we got to get Ashley on for this. I got to ask her afterwards. But uh, our clubhouse, our clubhouse, uh, we had it yesterday. It was fantastic. Uh, we had uh, hundreds of people that came on uh, and we, we were talking about cash flow. So uh, anyways, it's Thursdays at one o'clock if you want to check it out. Also today, uh, there's Serial Entrepreneur. Uh, I'm, get involved with that room. Those are the two rooms that I usually get into on Clubhouse. If you're interested, please join us. Uh, and that's it. I think Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday, Fridays, join us at noon Eastern Standard Time. Guys, thank you so much for being part of the community. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. Lunch with the lunch with the lunch with the lunch.